Bree mentioned several times the faithfulness of Mary. So this morning, uh, I want to share with you three ways when I soaped this text, uh, three of the ways that I found Mary being faithful. The first one is this, Mary was faithful in her waiting. You know, most of us are not very good waiters, and I don't mean serving at a restaurant or maybe even in your home. I mean just the simple fact of having to wait for something. Those of you who are parents, uh, probably already your kids are asking, can we open just one gift, right? And, on, and by the way, that's just going to increase, right? The intensity is just going to pick up the closer we get to Christmas Day. And so Mary was faithful in her waiting. Look in verse 26 of Luke 1. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel, if you highlight, underline in your Bible, to Nazareth. By the way, the only other reference you may have of Nazareth is later on in Jesus' ministry. Someone says, can anything good come from Nazareth? Like, what good thing can come from there, right? If a Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. So imagine just for a moment that you're Gabriel, and you know that one day you're going to go to the holy city. You're going to go to the holy temple, and you get the great fortune of telling Zechariah that, that Elizabeth is with child, and you guys are going to have the forerunner to the birth of Jesus. Gabriel has been waiting for this announcement, and then the Lord says, oh, by the way, after your visit to the holy city, to the holy temple, I'm going to ask you to go to Nazareth. I'm thinking Gabriel must have put it in Google Maps. and like, it doesn't even show up. Like, how am I supposed to get to Nazareth? Where in the world is that place? Uh, Nazareth was this small town about five and a half, six miles out of Jerusalem. They say that only about two to 300 people lived there during this time. It was known as a poor and lowly city. And yet in this small town, we find the faithfulness of a young lady named Mary. You know, I think what's so important in that thought is Mary is a good reminder that your standing with God is not achieved through your stature or your status, but through a surrendered life, regardless of your age, your circumstances, and even your location. And in verse 27, Mary was there, and she was a virgin who's pledged to be married. And I thought Bree did a great job of helping you understand that. I'll put it a little bit more into its context. Pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So to go back in that culture, in that time, that society, I, I want to share just a little bit of the background of what does it mean pledged to be married. We don't do it this way anymore, but I'm not so sure it might not have been the better way to have done it. Uh, Joseph's dad would have made the journey with Joseph, and they would have come to uh, Mary's home where they would have encountered Mary, but more importantly, Mary's father. And Joseph's dad and Mary's dad would have had a conversation, and Joseph's dad would have said something like this, I have three French hens, two turtle doves, a partridge, and a pear tree. What do you think? And that's a different story. That would not at all have been what he would have said. He would have said something like this, uh, how, how many goats and camels is it going to cost for us to come up with an, an acceptable arrangement for my son and your daughter to be engaged, to be married. That's how they would have done it in that day. And I understand, we don't do it like that today, but like I said, in America alone, the divorce rate right now is 54%. 54%. So I'm not so certain that this wasn't a better way. Uh, If their agreement would have happened, here's what would have happened next. Joseph and his father would have left. 
They technically, as Bree said, would have been married. A divorce certificate would have had to have ended that agreement. But Joseph and his father would have gone away. Sometimes for six months, maybe nine months, even up to a year. But during that waiting, Joseph would begin to build their room attached to the family home. So he would start preparing a place for Mary to come and live as his wife. And once that place was acceptable, the father would be the one to tell the son, you may now go get your bride. The room you built is complete. And then the son, in this case Joseph, he would have sent a forerunner. So he would have sent like his best man in the wedding. Go tell everyone the wedding feast is about to happen. So the forerunner would have gone ahead of him sharing the news. Joseph is coming. The wedding is about to happen. And then, of course, when Joseph arrived, arrived, they would have this wedding together. But think about this. Truly, it was only the father who would know when the wedding feast would happen. Now, keep that in mind, that tradition, that practice, that picture, when you hear the words that many of you have heard at so many funerals over the course of your life. Listen to the words of Jesus in John 14, 1 and 4. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. And then the words of Jesus in Matthew 24, verse 36. But about the day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven. And then Jesus says, nor the Son, meaning himself, but only who? The Father. Don't you love when the Bible comes together like that? When we see this beautiful picture of Jesus living his life here, dying, resurrected, ascending into heaven to do what? To work on our room. And one day, the father's going to say, hey, son, go get your bride. The room is ready. I just love the text that we have before us. You know, uh, Bree mentioned when Mary discovered that she was pregnant, her mind must have eventually wondered and thought about the social implications of her pregnancy. Now, here's what we know. Uh, Joseph thought about it. Pastor Chris last week mentioned that Joseph seriously thought about divorcing secretly Mary when he found out that she was pregnant and he knew there was no way the baby could be his. So if Joseph was thinking about the social implications, I think it's safe to assume that Mary was probably under the same pressure. But what about us? I mean, we talk about peer pressure to our kids, but I have discovered as a pastor for many years that peer pressure really doesn't go away. There's always these social implications that a lot of times we struggle with. Am I going to trust God with a surrendered life, or am I going to, am I going to be more worried about socially what people are saying and thinking of me? So I think this thing of peer pressure really never goes away. Until we decide that it's not going to be peer pressure that drives our life, but it's going to be the Lord who's going to drive our life. Yet, despite the pressures, we must and we see that Mary felt that, and yet she remained faithful in her waiting. You know, waiting is difficult because it's in this season of waiting that most of us realize we don't know what's going to happen next. 
It's in this season of waiting when we realize we don't know what's going on. It's in this season of waiting when we realize ultimately we're not in control. And for a lot of us, maybe even some of you who would describe yourself as a control freak, waiting is really, really difficult. It's in the waiting the reason we doubt. Because we don't know. It's in the waiting is the reason we worry because we simply don't know. It's the reason we're anxious a lot of times because we don't know. It's this season of waiting and yet what we find is in this season of waiting, this season of unknown, Mary stayed faithful to the Lord. Hey, are you in a season like that right now? This season where maybe you feel like the Lord has called you to do something, is asking you to do something. And and maybe like Mary, you can't figure it out in your head. Maybe you don't even figure it out in your heart. It's a season of waiting and yet you're going to remain faithful by taking God at his word and trusting him. 